And Eric Spolstra uh, said this playing game, this playing game is actually really smart and has really worked. I do know that play-in helped. Like, there were far less teams tanking. Everybody was fighting for it uh, those last two months. Every, every game was must-see TV, and that was in both conferences. Uh, so I think the league, that's probably the best thing that's happened in the last decade. So the play-in game and f- flattening the odds in the lottery. It used to be like 30% if you had the worst record, you could win the lottery. They flatten those odds out now. It's like 14, 14 and a half, 15%. So those two have alleviated uh, lots and lots and lots of tanking. We, we thought Utah Jazz were going to tank. They were a viable team. But here's where I think baseball just made really smart steps. You're seeing the reward in attendance and ratings and, and overall product quality. I think the NBA needs to do two things, kind of the same thing twice, to make it more about a quality league. It's becoming kind of a quantity league. And... The truth is, you need to shorten the regular season and the playoffs. It's now just a battle of attrition. I mean, I could give you a list of all the NBA stars who have been hurt. It's ridiculous. If the Lakers come back to L.A. and tie the series with the Nuggets, let's go back to Denver, play a game. We'll know they're fairly close and even teams. You don't need three more games to decide it. That's three more games that Jokic, AD, or LeBron could get hurt. You saw last night, LeBron hit the floor. I want this to be the best teams advance, right? The best teams advance, not survival of the fittest. It's not a reality show. I don't want my contestants losing weight and, you know, eating straw to survive on an island. I want the best teams to win. College basketball decide it's the one thing college basketball, and maybe it's too acute, but it it does very well. They decide your fate. You play an entire regular season. They decide your fate. In March, in 40 minutes, the NBA decides playoff fate in the first round, second, finals, conference final, in 336 minutes. Do we really need nine times the amount of basketball to decide the fate of teams? Shorten the regular season and shorten the playoffs to five-game series. I do three games in the first round. What if you get an upset? We had one. Miami got bounced, or uh, Milwaukee got bounced. We had one. It, would it have been different in three games? We had an upset. If there's going to be an upset, I mean, New York beat the Cavs. You could tell by halftime of game one. New York was better. You could tell very early in Miami and Milwaukee. Miami was better, better coached, better game plan. You can tell very quickly. Right now, it looks like in the conference finals, Denver's better. Lakers come back home, win one, it's 3-1. You know, we, we, we don't need longer series. You really don't. In everything that really gets a TV rating, March Madness, college football, NFL, uh, this, you know, once you get out of the group stage in the World Cup, stuff that gets big ratings, create urgency. Best teams will win. And so March Madness is 68 teams. They finish it in two and a half weeks. In the NBA, if you count the play-in games, it's like 20 teams. It takes nine and a half weeks. And I was looking this morning at all the players that were hurt during the playoffs. Giannis, Embiid, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, De'Aaron Fox, Paul George, Anthony Davis, John Morant, Chris Paul, Julius Randle, Tyler Hero, Victor Oladipo. It's not what we want. We always say this. The NFL's better when I never see a backup quarterback. It's always better when I don't see a backup quarterback. I'm getting backups. This is not survival of the fittest. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the best players on the best teams. And you can tell, as long as everybody gets at least one or two home games, you can tell. Right? You could tell by game six who was going to win game seven. That's why we went on the air and said game seven is going to be Boston. Right? But you, and if if Philadelphia would have won, so be it. It's not like Boston's perfect. It's not like Boston's not flawed. They've got arguably the worst coach in the entire playoffs. If Boston would have lost, and it's a three- or five-game series, eh, well, they got a bad coach. Bad coaches don't win titles. But I I think they've done a good job in this playing game. I really do. I think it got people engaged. But I do think baseball's smarter. What do they do? Shorten it. Football's smarter, less violent. Basketball, just reduce 
the possibility of injuries. You're watching these games last night. These players are gassed. You're getting the worst of Jokic by the fourth quarter. You're getting the worst of AD by the second half. Shorten it, quality over quantity. That's what I would do. But I think the play-in game has been a success. Big success. I mean, I remember a few weeks ago when we were watching that, we were like, those were must-see. Remember, didn't the, the Warriors did the Warriors play? There was the, a, a, the, some, Lakers the Lakers played game, the Timberwolves. And they are trailed, trailed, and then they came yeah. back, and it got like a rating. Schroeder hit the three from the corner. But remember, the Miami Heat lost the play-in game at home to Trey Young yeah. and then had to beat my guy, Zach <laughs> Levine. And Levine and them, they were leading in the fourth quarter. Yeah, And it was like, oh, my gosh, are the Heat going to blow this? And then, you know, Miami pulls it out, and now the Heat are three wins from the finals. Boston tonight, I think, wins. The line is nine. Uh, no. I would probably stay away, but I do think Boston wins comfortably. Do you know how much of a brush fire you started on the internet with the Jimmy Butler, Kawhi stuff yesterday? People are just so worked up, and it's staggering and to for me. For people that missed yesterday's show, what did we say? Yeah, uh, like Jimmy it, Butler and Kawhi were drafted in the same draft. Who's had the better career? Who would you rather have going forward? Like, these are no-brainers. What I want you to do is reach out to your NBA people Get them to text you and be like, I, I, who wants to get in the Kawhi Leonard business right now? Like, nobody. nobody. And everybody. this is like a three-year thing now. By the way, 75% of the league would get into the Jimmy Butler business today. Yeah. No, but nobody wants in the Kawhi business. Who, who leaves Greg Popovich in, like, bad terms? Like, he's had a great run in San Antonio. Kawhi Leonard's the only guy who was like, ah, I, don't want, I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah, I always say it, it's, um, like, Kawhi and Ben Simmons – and for the record, Ben Simmons was all rookie, all NBA. Yeah, yeah. He was very good early. Um, there's an indifference to both. Now, it's really bad with Simmons.